So I've been reading the Harry Potter books for the first time. Gasp. I've already watched all the movies, so the plots are spoiled, but the books are still amazing. So I, I want to draw some fan art. Yee. And if you couldn't tell already, I've been uh, <laughs> pretty art blocked recently. So maybe some fan art will help ease me back into the swing of things. The character I'm going to be drawing is Remus Lupin, and let's get into it. Hello, I'm Zakira, and welcome back to my channel. And right out of the gate, let me tell ya, this painting took me a long time to finish. Not because it was particularly complicated or special, but because I have been just really out of it when it comes to illustration. I have been kind of art blocked, not gonna lie. Feeling, feeling a little rubbishy with painting. <laughs> but one way of getting some artwork done when you're art blocked is to do some fan art. Because if your love for illustration isn't strong enough to get you to pick up a freaking pencil, <laughs> then hopefully your love for a character might. And I really want to do some Harry Potter fan art because indeed I have been slowly consuming the Harry Potter book series for the first time. I just finished book three, which is where Remus Lupin was introduced. And I don't know if I really need to say this because y'all know old man Zakira here is like two decades behind, but the books are so freaking good though. And I'm probably gonna geek out about it later in this video, but for now, the painting. So this painting took me a really long time, mostly because I was really indecisive about every step of the piece. It was definitely not one of those illustrations where you have a clear image in your head going into it. This one was pretty much just figuring it out as I went along. And I originally sketched the composition on a piece of watercolor paper, which is pretty normally how I start traditional pieces. But then I just wasn't sure how to really finalize the pose and the composition. And I kind of felt like I made his head too long and all that. So I took a picture, brought it into my computer, and I finished the sketch in Clip Studio Paint. Then I printed it out and traced it onto another piece of watercolor paper using my laptop as a light box. Which, ironically, my laptop screen is not bright enough to work as a light box when the sunlight is pouring into my room. It was probably the first time I actually had to wait for the sun to go down before I could continue working on an illustration. And if you want to know more about the frustrations of using a laptop as a light box, you can check out this video. <laughs> The result was something I was pretty happy with, but then I was hit with further indecisiveness on how I actually wanted to paint the thing. I wasn't sure what medium I should use, what kind of line work, what color palette and all that. I'm telling you, art block is a beach tree <laughs> on my decisiveness. But I kind of settled on black line work with watercolor. I figured with the orientation of the image being vertical and kind of slim, Maybe I could go for a kind of um, comic book cover look and maybe bring back some of that good old cross hatching with the black Tombow calligraphy pen, which if you guys have been around these parts for a while, you know that I used to do tons of work with ink and black lines and hatching and so on. And uh, so I kind of brought it back with this piece. The composition was a little tricky with this illustration because I knew I wanted to include Lupin's transformation into a werewolf and I wasn't really sure how to actually convey the point of it being his transformation and not just end up looking like a guy standing next to a werewolf. I ended up actually googling some fan art of this character to see how other artists have done it and most of the time people seem to put the werewolf kind of silhouetted behind him or kind of standing over him in a <laughs> kind of pose. All really really great stuff but obviously I wanted to be the edgelord that I am and think of something different. I ended up with this concept of having the full moon kind of leering behind him, which obviously is the thing that causes his transformation, and then having the werewolf character kind of ghostishly fade into the moon, if that makes sense. And this way I didn't actually have to draw the werewolf's hands and legs. 
always thinking. For the character itself, I based his look on the movie portrayal uh, played by actor David Thewlis. And in the movie, he pretty much just wears a brown suit and that's it. <laughs> Which makes sense for his character, but I mean, design-wise, his character is rather plain and I had even drawn his head positioned in such a way where his hair part like his hairline is unseen so with him being so normal I wasn't sure how recognizable he was going to be in my style but thankfully the movies do represent Remus with scars on his face for some reason. <laughs> and a feature like that makes it so much easier to recognize a character even when it's drawn in this cartoony, simplified style. So thank goodness for that or he was about to just look like some dude holding a stick. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, I just finished book 3 out of the Harry Potter series, The Prisoner of Azkaban, which was most definitely the best out of the first three that I've read, in my opinion. A big part owing to how much more it expanded on other side characters, like Remus Lupin, who, if I remember correctly, really didn't get talked about at all much in the movies. In the movie, he was just like this nice teacher who taught Harry the Patronus charm. Oh, and he was also a werewolf. <laughs> and I totally get it, like, not complaining. Movies are condensed because they have to tell a whole story in a couple of hours. Don't know how screenplay writers manage that, especially when they've got to adapt, like, a freaking 700-page book <laughs> into a short, coherent film. The third book in particular has tons of plots and side plots going on, too with like Sirius Black, and Hogsmeade, time travel, the Marauder's Map, and so on. So it's, it's kind of understandable that poor old Mooney kind of got a smaller role in the film. But after reading book three, he quickly went from being some side character that I didn't really care much about to being my current favorite character. He's a great teacher, he's cool as a cucumber, <laughs> he's got that whole underdog thing going for him, and so on. But also, especially, I think his character, and I mean all the characters really, are just so thoughtfully written. And I guess this is basically me fangirling <laughs> over JK Rowling's writing skills here. Not that she needs it. But I feel like with a character like Lupin, with him being kind of that role model-ish father figure character for Harry in the third book, it'd be easy when writing him, I would think, to kind of make a character like that too perfect. You know, someone who's just totally confident and logical and compassionate and wise and knows exactly what to say at the right time and helps everybody and so on. But even though those traits show up in Lupin's character a lot, especially from the point of view of the students, there is also hints of insecurity and fears and guilt that shows up in some of Lupin's actions which really make him whole and make him relatable and makes you want to get to know more about him. And then when his backstory is told, it just perfectly ties his character and all of his traits together in a way that makes sense and is satisfying. I mean, that's just like, I mean, just really fantastic character crafting and writing all around, man. I mean, I know I'm massively late to the party, <laughs> but those are some like writing goals right there. At least in my opinion, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys feel differently. Maybe you don't even like the Harry Potter books. <laughs> Which I would respect, though I don't know why you'd be watching this video then. But don't stop. But yeah, that that's there's my sort of self-indulgent geek out session for this video. Which is a necessity whenever I draw fan art. Because I usually only make fan art for things that I am a big fan of. <laughs> and I have quickly become a fellow Potter head, whatever the fan <laughs> group for Harry Potter is. <laughs>
So coming back to the illustration, halfway through with the watercolor, stuff was just not working out with Lupin's face. I tried pulling out some Copic markers, but that just made things worse, <laughs> and I was massively panicking, so I stopped, and I took a picture of what I had, imported it into Clip Studio Paint, and started painting over it digitally. Because often when things are going awry, it's because you don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? No, I mean like you don't know where the shadows are supposed to go, what colors you should be using and so on, so you just start painting from the hip, if you will, and hope that you get it right, which you usually don't, <laughs> and I definitely wasn't. I didn't know exactly where the shadows were supposed to go on his face, so thumbnailing digitally helped me kind of mess around until I got it to look right, and then I used that as reference to finish the painting. But you can't exactly erase watercolor and Copics, so instead I had to pull out my jelly gouache, which is opaque, and paint it over his face with that, which I really think saved the day for this painting. Thank goodness for the gouache. Like I've mentioned many times already, I was really indecisive with this painting all the way through to the end, which is why it took so long because I sat on it for days in between the steps trying to figure out how I wanted the end result to look. But in the end, I really did just have to kind of figure it out as I went. <laughs> and while it may have not been the smoothest painting I've ever done, I do think it turned out eh, all right. I do like how the moon and the werewolf turned out. I think the coloring worked out pretty well with that. But y'all can let me know what you think in the comments. Also, let me know who your favorite Harry Potter character is. I am definitely looking forward to diving into book four. And I've noticed that the books are getting progressively fatter. <laughs> so I'm excited for all the content and learning more about the other characters. And also hopefully getting out of this art rut. <laughs> maybe someday. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening and spending some of your day with me. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also be sure to hit that little bell so you stay notified on upcoming videos. If you'd like to support me by getting my books <laughs> or check out my shop or subscribe to my newsletter, I always greatly appreciate it. And all that and more can be found over on my website, zekira.com. The link is down below in the description box along with links to all the materials I used in this video in case any of you guys are curious. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!